it going? Good. What's your name? Stephanie. Stephanie? Okay, I'm Brandon. Nice to meet you. No, I've seen you up here a lot. Didn't you quit working here for a while? Mm -hmm. Came back? Mm -hmm. Cool. You don't remember me? No, I do remember oh, you. Okay. I was just... Yeah. yeah. Came back. Cool. I love the place. I was wondering, have you heard of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you a believer? You believe in Jesus Christ? You've been born again? Yeah. No? Yeah. Jesus said you must be born again or you cannot see the kingdom of God. Do you like to take a gospel tract? A what? A gospel tract? Yeah. It talks about Jesus. I got some better littler ones than this that I'm making that are laminated and stuff, but this is okay. a kind of bulky, but... Well, thank yeah. you. Um, it says that you have to be born of the Spirit to go to heaven. You have to have the uh, God's Holy Spirit indwelling in you. You have to repent of your sins and believe in Jesus Christ. And if you do that, uh, honestly, sincerely, you come to God, then you will be born again. You'll become a new creature in Christ. So if you don't have a specific time in your life where you repented and, and came to your faith in Jesus Christ, like a specific moment that you remember where you were changed, and, you know, now you're serving the Lord, then you need to you need to do that. Right. You actually have to be a changed person. Otherwise, it's just a faith in vain. A lot of people say they believe in Jesus, you know, but if they're not born again, then it doesn't count. Right. It's just saying words that don't mean anything. Right. So. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, anytime you want to talk about it. So my email's on there and stuff. And do you have a Bible? Mm -hmm. um, do I actually carry one around? Huh? I actually carry one around with me. Good. My what? miniature Bible. I got it when I was a kid. Cool. What kind is it? My little pink Bible. Cool. Awesome. Got it when I was a little <laughs> girl. Nice. Well, it's good that you kept this. Yeah, I'd never get rid of it. Okay. Did someone in your family give it to you or something? Yeah. My grandma, my granny grunt cool. gave it to me. Actually, can I see that? Mm -hmm. I can show you something. Well, for one, this is a New King James Version. Um, I put on that track that you should get a King James Bible. Um, a lot of people will say the New King James, the only difference is they take out the these and the thous, but that's false. They take out actual whole verses, right. and they change a lot of things. So you really should get a King James Bible. I can give you one if you want one. Um, the wording in this might be a little different, but yeah. See, it's John, John verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, uh, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay, that means that, you know, there actually has to be a real change. Right. You know, it's where now... I believe in Jesus now. My life is dedicated to him. The Bible is his word. I'm going to adhere to God's word. You know, I'm going to spread the gospel. I'm going to stay away from sin. You know what I mean? All that. So, so if you haven't been born again, if you haven't repented, then I suggest that you do that. Uh, get saved. Yeah. But, you know, it's good that you have that. But like I said, that, there's a lot of errors in that new King James. Right. So you should get a King James. Okay. Uh, we'll do that. Yeah. Uh, I can't think off the top of my head the verses that, that it takes out and stuff, but it does. So there's actually some dangerous things in the other translations. Right. And you see the King James, uh, it was used for 400 years, and then people started making new versions and uh, correcting it, and they did it for money, because the King James isn't copyrighted. The new King James and all the other ones, they're copyrighted, they make money off of them. Right. And, you know, they have to change so many things to to get that copyright. And the things that they change are important. You know, every word is the word of God. You don't just take things out, say it doesn't belong there. So, you live around here? Mm -hmm. You close? Yeah, I live down by September and them. You know oh, yeah. them? I live down cool. on that road, um, right next door to Kathy Oster. You just moved there recently? Uh-uh. We've no? lived there since I worked here the first time. Okay. Cool. We just, uh, we wasn't home for a while. We went on the road and worked, but we've always lived there. Okay. Or well, since we moved here, anyways. Yeah. Awesome. But yeah. Cool. Yeah, I've lived here most of my life. I was friends with Josh in September for, you know, since kindergarten. Oh, yeah? So, yeah. 
Yep, I live down on that road, not the cemetery road, I guess the easiest way to say it. Right across the street from John Swearingen. Cool. If you don't look out his front door, okay. but if you look at yeah. the side of his house, you know, I'm that White House right okay. there. Okay, I know where it is. Yep. Yeah, I know where that is then. Yeah, I used to hang out with them and stuff, and I've been in jail multiple times, you know. And I used to go to the Assembly of God, and uh, I've probably been saved for about a year now. Oh, yeah. I don't think that I was ever truly saved until this last year. I was really born again. Now my life has really changed. Not only did I quit doing the drugs and the stuff that I do, but I study the Bible every day, right. you know, and I spread the gospel. I, you know, it's a real true conversion, and... Uh, and I want to say that about, too, that to, you should stay away from church buildings, and I put that on there. A lot of people think if you're a Christian that you got to go to a church building, but that's not what the Bible says. And there's actually more harm that these church buildings do than good. Right. A lot of them teach false doctrine, like the Assembly of God teaches that you can lose salvation. That's a lie. Because, uh, like John 3.16 says, whoever so believeth in the Son, um, they, have it, they have eternal life, and they will, they'll never perish. Right. That means once you believe and you are born again, then there's no losing that. Right. It's like a physical birth. If somebody's born, you know, they can't go back into their mother's womb and be unborn. Right. So once you're born and you're a child of God, then it's eternal. It's done. No amount of sin, no big sin can can cut you off from that. Right. So. I didn't know that. That's true. Yep. So the Assembly of God, the Pentecostals, they teach that you can lose it. So... They say, you know, if you sin so much or whatever, you backslide, then you lose your salvation. So in reality, they're trusting in their own works to be saved. They're saying, you know, I've refrained from sin and stuff, and that's how I'm going to get into heaven. The only way to get into heaven is to repent of your sin and to have faith in Jesus Christ. It's of faith, not of works. Right. Ephesians 2, 8, verse 9, it says, um, Salvation is by grace, through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Um, Jesus Christ did all the work on the cross. No, we can't get to heaven by doing good works. You know, that's what the Amish and stuff, they believe, too. they got to wear, you know, their uniforms. they got to not have electricity and all that because they think that's going to get them into heaven, but that's a lie. Right. Um, and that's what Catholics believe. you got to confess your sins to a priest and all this and do the rosary, and that's how you get into heaven. You're only going to get into heaven by faith, okay, by a true belief right. in Jesus Christ and what he did. So well, it's a very important doctrine. Me. Yeah? I do appreciate it. You yeah. don't get that very much. <laughs> yeah. Just search the scriptures, so have a good night. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.